In this video, I'm going to dive deeper into how to actually write the discussion section for your research paper. So if you're currently struggling how to connect all the literature that you presented in your introduction literature review, how to connect it with your results and how to discuss your results properly, then this video will show you exactly how to do this. So let's dive right in. So first of all, let's talk about the two main ways in which the discussion section can be included in a research paper. The first way is to include it as a separate section from results, right? So first you just present your results and there is no discussion there. It's just a presentation of the facts, of the results that you obtained. And then afterwards you have a section called discussion. In some fields this might even be combined with the conclusion, especially in fields like medicine I've noticed, which, and it will be called discussion and conclusion. Right? But you simply in that section, what you do is you discuss the results that you've presented in the previous section, right? So results and discussion are two separate sections. And that's way number one. Way number two is to combine the two and have one section called results and discussion. And in that section, you're going to present a result and then discuss it, present another result and discuss it, present another result and discuss it all in one section called results and discussion. So you might be wondering, well, which of those two ways is better, Marek? Which would you recommend I do in my research paper? Both are correct. Maybe that's not the answer that you're looking for, but both are correct. There's no better or worse way out of these two of doing it. It really depends on what the journal requires or what is typical in your field. So how can I find out which one I should use? Well, what you want to do is just very quickly download a couple of papers from the journal that you chose where you want to submit and see if they have one results and discussion section or they have two results and then discussion and just do the same thing. If you haven't chosen a journal yet, then just look at the research papers that you're referencing in your own paper in the literature review and see what they've done and see if the majority of them has results and discussion together or separate and then do the same. Now, if you find that it's kind of like 50-50, some of them have results and discussion together, some of them have them separate, what should I do? Well, my personal preference in that case would be to put results and discussion together. Because I feel that this makes the paper more concise, it makes it tighter and there is less repetition. But that's just my personal preference. If I had a choice, this is what I would do. But what you need to do if you don't know is to check with the papers in your field or in that specific journal. Before I tell you exactly how to structure the discussion section and show you an example from a research paper. If you're new here and you're wondering who I am, my name is Marek Kiczkovek and I run Academic English Now, where I help PhD students and researchers regularly publish papers in high impact journals. And if you're enjoying this video, click the, click the like, the subscribe button so you don't miss future videos. So the good news about the discussion section in a research paper is that it follows a very predictable structure. You're probably thinking like, what? Really? Why has nobody told me that before? Well, this is really true. No matter which field you're in, what you're doing, there is a very predictable structure that consists of four simple elements. What are they? The first one, R, is result. Or this would be either the statement of the result or restatement if your discussion is separate. But the result always goes first. After the result, we've got C, which stands for comparing with the literature. What does that mean? Well, basically you want to tell us whether your results are similar or different from the previous studies, right? So you want to say something like, you know, similar results were obtained by, you know, um, these results differ from those obtained by, right? Just to give you an example. But basically you want to show us how these, your results, um, fit in into that research field in which you're in. And this is where you bring references from the introduction and from the literature review. You don't have to reinvent the wheel and include a newer reference, other references. Of course you can if you want to, but the easiest thing to do is just to bring in the same references that you already used in your literature review. I mean, that's the whole point of the literature review, right? To provide us the necessary context. And now you can use that context to compare your findings too. Right? So that's the second element, compare with the literature. Now the third element, E, stands for explain. What do I mean by that? Well, imagine your results are different from those of previous studies. Well, the obvious question that the reader is asking is why? Why are your results different? Tell me. 
That's what I mean by explanation. So you can say, you know, one potential explanation of why these results are different is that we had a smaller sample size or whatever, right? So you want to provide some sort of logical explanation for these differences with literature. Also imagine that, you know, you've got some unexpected results, right? That you simply did not predict. Well, again, the obvious question is like, why? Why did you get those results? And again, you want to provide some sort of explanation for it. And then the fourth element, I, stands for interpretation. What does that mean? Basically, you need to interpret your results, right? You need to tell us what this actually means. The biggest mistake that I see people make in the discussion section is that they just like compare the results to the literature and then just end there. And this really leaves the reader hanging there, just kind of like, okay, but what are you actually trying to tell me? What does this mean, you know? Um, but what is your, what are you saying here? And these are some of the questions that you should be asking yourself when you're uh, discussing your results. Like, so what? What is the main message here, right? So you want to say things like, you know, these results suggest that, these results indicate that, right? And interpret what your, the findings that you got and the literature, right? To sort of put it all together. So these are the four elements that you must include in your discussion section. Now, Typically what happens is that you don't always need to include all four of them in every single paragraph of the discussion section. That would be crazy. But you will always have to state your result, right? And you will always have to compare with the literature. Now, if your results are different from the literature, unexpected, then you will definitely have some explanation. But if they aren't, if they're just very similar to the previous studies, then no explanation is needed. But you definitely want to interpret the findings as well at the end, right? So these are the four elements, but now let's dive into an actual research paper and let's see how this is actually done in a paper. So let me show you two examples from two different fields of how the discussion is actually done. And also each of those examples will be different in terms of the results of the discussion being together and being separate. So the first example, this one, is going to be one where results were presented first and then now discussion is a completely separate section, right? So how does it work? Well, you can see in here, if we just look at this paragraph, you know, that the writer states the result first, right? And then they compare them to a previous study, right? You can see here Markov et al., right? And there is a difference between their results and that previous study. So what do they do, right? They explain this difference. Can probably be attributed to, right? This is an explanation um, of the difference, right? Um, so this follows that clear pattern that we've been discussing. And this is further continued because the reader, the writer further supports, you know, uh, their hypothesis for the difference with the literature, presents more results, you know, explains them, compares them with literature and interprets them. Now one thing that I want to highlight is this sort of interpretation of the data, you know, answering the question, so what? Because there, there's a lot of information in here. And like, if you just leave the reader here, we kind of like, okay, but what does this actually mean? What is the main point that you're trying to make here? Well, this is the main point, right? And it's right in the last sentence. And after reading this sentence, you know exactly what the writer is telling us. So this is, this is key. This is like this interpretation of the result, right? So don't forget, you know, state the result, compare it with literature, explain if necessary, and then you should interpret the result and tell us what this actually means. So this is one example where discussion was separate. Now, how do you do it if you've got one section, results and discussion, together. Well, you follow a very similar pattern where you first present some results, right? Results have been presented and then they are compared with literature, right? This is in contrast to um, this study, right? And then there is some explanation and interpretation, right? And then we've got the results again, and then we've got comparison with the literature, right? And then we've got explanation, right? So you see how this works. It's exactly the same. We've got results uh, presented, 
right? Comparison with the literature, explanation, interpretation, right? Um, again, results, right? Comparison with the literature and further comparison with the literature, right? And then in here you've got interpretation and explanation of these results. So the pattern is exactly the same, whether the results and discussion are together or they are separate. Remember, um, the results, compare with the literature, explain if necessary, and then interpret your results. And if you're enjoying this video and you'd like more personalized help publishing research papers in top journals in your field, then schedule a free one-to-one -one consultation. We're going to meet one-to-one -one and discuss what your biggest challenges are, what you want to achieve, and then outline a personalized action plan for you that will help you to achieve those results. And then if it sounds like it's a good fit and we can help you, then we can discuss further what working together would look like. And the link to book that free one-to-one -one consultation is just below this video.